Whereas I'm just like, you know what, I don't care. Um, <laughs> um, it means the, the Twitch VODs get muted, but I'm putting this stuff on YouTube anyway, so it's not that big of a deal, in my opinion. Like, Twitch VODs are pretty horrible anyways. So, um... So, yeah. Twitch ads for Germans are so silly. Are they really? What's happening? No ads for subscribers? I don't know if I've got no ads for subscribers turned on or not. Um, in all honesty. I, I, I actually, I, I think it must be turned on. I imagine. I think. I think it's turned on. Anyways, let's introduce our players here, guys. Another left-hand corner from Dignitas Dead Pixels. One of the first times, I think he's come out in the team league a couple of times this season. Uh, hasn't had much need to because usually one of the Korean players from Dead Pixels cleans up, but it is bling. There are ads for subs? Oh. I'm sure you can turn it off for your subscribers. Maybe. I'm not sure. <clears throat> Maybe I'm just imagining things. Anyways, down to the bottom right hand corner, our pink Protoss player representing EC Visualize taking down True in game number one, ladies and gentlemen. Snovsky. What's the countdown I use? It's a program called Snaz. It's pretty useful. Wow, uh, no ads for subs are on the older channels, Coffee. Okay, well, that makes more sense immediately, doesn't it? <clears throat> so, um. Yeah, I guess it's another thing. I, I didn't really know. I've never really paid that much attention to it. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't, it's been ages since I actually did my Twitch contract. You know, I've been, I've been a partner for over a year on Twitch now. That's actually pretty insane. I remember the first months. It's actually insane how far we've come, because I remember the first months. I as if that was only a year ago. No, that can't be right. But it is, wow. We only got partnership like a year ago. We've come so far in a year. It's absolutely insane, the growth the channel's seen in the last year. It's It genuinely is kind of incredible. Um... It's all because of you guys who are awesome enough to sit and watch for multiple hours on end. I mean, we're coming up to, what, the 7th? This is actually the 7th hour of streaming right now today. So, um, thank you guys for staying tuned. And we've had huge viewers all day long, which is um, always great to see. Early on in this PvP, not really too much exciting is uh, happening, though. Snovsky has been checking around with a probe a little bit. But apart from that... He's not really been able to see too much of significance, and as the probes leave the bases of their opponents, the tech begins to come down. Stargate will be the st style of play. Coming in from Snovsky here from Easy Visualize. And to the upper left hand corner from Bling, we see the Twilight Council coming down. So, two very different styles of tech here, and we'll, I imagine we'll see Bling going into the. Um, Stalkers, and we're probably going to be seeing an Oracle player out of Snovsky in which he will follow up most likely with a Twilight Council of his own and start getting Blink of his own. Um, he's actually going to start Phoenix though, so that's actually quite interesting. And we'll see where this takes him as uh, he can still go into Blink of his own here, or he could go into a fast robo. Actually, that's really interesting because now Blink drops the Dark Shrine in the bottom left corner of the map, so he is going to be a little bit sneaky with this one, getting the Dark Shrine in there. And looking to see if he can get any damage done with this. And, um, yeah, I mean, it could work out really well because, I mean, Snovsky, what detection does he have on the map? He has a Stargate, he can start an Oracle, but he hasn't started a Robo Facility just yet. I say that, and he starts one. So, he, basically, he's going to have to rely on this Robo Facility to be his, to get a detection out in time. Bling is going to start moving forwards with his probe. And how far forward is he going to try and get the pylon here? You could put one here and then maybe move forwards into the back of the natural and put one down as well. You need to put one up first of all though, because like here or so. Because you really can't risk your probe being killed before you get that pylon down. Otherwise your DTs are going to hit so late. These um, Phoenix are starting to come in towards the main base here. And they're about to see a Twilight Council. Or are they? They do see the Twilight Council. Blink starts the research on that just as the Phoenix come in. So I wonder if they saw it or not. He sees the timing of the uh, expansion though. And that should probably suggest maybe that um, this isn't just going to be Bling Stalkers. Because that is a pretty quick expand coming out of Bling right now. Although Snovsky is just going to answer it with an expansion of his own. Dark Shrine finishes first DT starts to move forwards. Observer on the way. And this DT is... 
Maybe we're going to be able to pick off a probe or two, but not do too much, I don't think. I mean, well, he might be able to get the sentry if you would like. Um, I guess the sentry is a bad choice because, oh, he messes it up. He actually lasted the DT in here. So DT is going to pick one, two, three kills, and this has actually gone pretty well considering he's got an expansion of back at home. This Dark Temple play is something which you kind of open with and expand behind basically nowadays. And we only invest in one Dark Temple kind of gives you the general idea of, you know, this isn't a big commitment. So, um,. As you can see, we have um, <laughs> it's a bit of an interesting talk. The advantage of replays because we don't have to sit through the three minutes where Snovsky was po paused. Stalkers trying to turn around the Phoenix there are successful. The Phoenix haven't done too much so far this game. I guess they might have picked off a couple of workers. Um, just one, so not really done too much. Keeping their lifts available and uh, just keeping themselves safe. Blink going to be finishing up for Blink very soon, but we actually see Snovsky going into this forge, so forge on the way, and uh, with that forge he's going to be able to, uh, yeah, he's going to be able to solve up this plus one, it's going to be quite far ahead of Blink, and Blink just generally behind in tech here, the immortal already on the way here for his opponent, he does have Blink, and that's something he can utilise here in the mid game to try and get some damage done, move out on that, maybe Blink up to the high ground a couple of times, try and pick off a couple of workers in that regard, um, It'll be interesting to see how he uses it here. Interested to see when he puts that forge down. It's going to be now, so he's not going to be too far behind in upgrades here. And, you know, one, two corona difference, and he could very easily even up that uh, kind of difference. These stalkers just moving back a little bit in towards this main base. These uh, Phoenix, though, look as though they're going to try and come in and pick up some worker kills here. They've killed four workers now throughout, and uh, whoa, a stalker's going to blink right on top of them, and alongside a throw an overcharge. This is really bad. Snovsky loses two of his Phoenixes. That's not meant to happen. He picks up one of them here, and oh, no, it's busy killing the probe. And he gets one probe for another of the Phoenix. That was a complete disaster for Snovsky there. He loses all of his Phoenix apart from one. I mean, one Phoenix on his own does absolutely nothing, so... Loses three Phoenix in quick succession there. Starts an Oracle, so continuing to use this Stargate despite, um, you know, despite, you know, you don't actually really see the Stargate used too much after the early game, usually. Um, no, you don't usually see the Stargate used too much in the, after the early game at all, usually. However, this time he's actually going to put this Oracle up and uh, get it going and see what he can try and do with it. Um, obviously, you see the Stargate come in a little much later in the game. You see some Oracles made for revelations and usually for uh, to aid the uh, uh, range of the Tempest vision. Stalker's coming in here, Blink does have Blink, and so he blinks on out. That Oracle, let's keep an eye on this, I'm quite intrigued as to whether this can actually achieve any damage, because after killing all those Phoenix, I imagine one of the first things that goes through Blink's head is, hey, I can move out, and that's exactly what he's done. So it might just be what Snovsky is kind of hoping on, or relying on, that his opponent just didn't leave anything here, and honestly, he didn't, so... This Oracle looks as though it might very well be worth its investment, Poking in with the Phoenix to see what's there. Wants to make sure when this Oracle does come in, it does its maximum amount of damage. As Bling starts up a Robo Bay a little bit sooner than Snovsky. His just finishes now as Snovsky's is on the way. Snovsky a little bit ahead and upgrades those. Here we go for another shot's gonna pop against this Oracle. Only two kills, but he keeps the Oracle alive at least. A bunch of stalkers down here to the south side of the map. Look as though they want to try and poke in towards the main. Looks as though they may have already tried to poke into the main. Have we missed something here? No, nothing really killed off so. Just for an overcharge used to ward these away, maybe we saw a pylon killed off or something like that. Um, nope, doesn't look like it. Oracle just sitting over to this uh, right inside where a third base may very well go down. And if he is quick on the minimap, he may be able to kill a pro before he pops down that nexus. So that's his going to go right there. He's blinking into the natural again, blinking away. Ooh, there's a bit of a miss. Oh, okay, he only blinked half his stalkers back. I was going to say, that's a bit of a miss blink. And uh, another force wheel could have trapped them, but Snovsky a little bit more... Um, aware of his surroundings and me and realised that Blink had to Blink still up for most of those. So Snovsky here just um, sitting here in his main base. We see this Oracle going to get shut down though and well in the end the Oracle didn't really achieve all too much more considering that Phoenix got a couple more of them killed since we last looked at this. The Oracle really didn't do much. I don't think it was a worthwhile investment in the end there. Was, I mean, both players heading into Colossi right now. Snovsky with double Robo up and running um, to help catch up from the slightly earlier Robo Bay from Blink. Blink continue moving around with these stalkers, and because he had that Blink in the early game, he can continue to just pressure out on the map with these, look for an opportunity to get something, pick something else off, or something like that. So, um. 
yeah, these uh, stalkers thinking about what they might want to do. Fort and Overcharge, preemptive to hopped and not able to get anything done. Sees a Fort and Overcharge and just blinks straight out of there. No way is he going to engage those two immortals. Motion Core actually gets killed off there. That's a pretty interesting pick off there. I mean, for the Motion Core to actually go down, that's pretty crazy. Honestly, I didn't really. That was, that was really weird. Third base on the way down here for Bling. And this one Phoenix does get something else done in the game then, a lot more than I thought it would. Bling plus two about a finish. I mean, he's only about 40 seconds behind the plus three, so it just means he has to make sure he uses the defender's advantage of um, positioning to negate any upgrade advantage Snowski might try and push with at any point. Most of the cross icons are looking like three against three. I mean, despite having invested into a second robo facility, Snowski really hasn't been making the most of it. He's only making one Colossus right now. I mean, it is expensive, and he's only on two bases. Now he's got two in production at the same time. Bling should be heading into his own second robo facility fairly soon. I mean, it's getting to that point in the game when the third base comes up. It's that sort of time where you want to be starting that and getting it going and getting it rolling for yourself. I see a pylon coming down, and, um, well... Thing. Apparently, he just walks straight past the pylon. He's uh, gonna let the rest of his use of that as he actually brings forwards up here. Don't know what he's trying to pick off there. Maybe he's got the Phoenix? No, the Phoenix. No, actually, is the Phoenix still around? No, the Phoenix has gone down. I don't know what the Blink Stalkers were chasing after. Maybe it was that Phoenix. Bling is uh, moving forwards here with a bunch of his Stalkers and looking to see what he can maybe get up to. So he's going to blow in gun to that uh, hallucination there, take that down. Stalker's just uh, moving across the map. And, well, Templar Archives is about to finish up a bling, plus three is halfway done. Getting into an aggressive position where he could maybe try and make something happen. Looks like he might try and blink into the main base, pull his opponent out of position, then try and hit the third of his opponent. Could be a pretty scary 1 2 combo here. As he blinks into the main base, Cannon's gonna start going down and oh, look at this. Warp is in at the same time, dropping Zelda. He's gonna be able to warp in as well. And this is gonna be a lot of damage into the main. He's pulling a lot away, but Slovsky responds really well. He leaves a lot over towards this third base. And Blink really needs to respond. He cannot just leave his units here. And he will drop a time warp. He will be able to retreat because of that time warp. But actually, that maybe means that Snowski hasn't committed enough to this. And actually, look at this. He is going to lose his natural, his main base nexus. So Bling getting something done here. It wasn't at the third base as we were maybe expecting. Simply because his opponent just you know overcommitted to defending the third base and not committed enough to defending over here. He also just lost two Colossi to these Bling stalkers as they blink out now. The final result will get cleaned up. But Snowski has just taken a series of heavy hits against his army. Two Colossi dead. Main base dead. He's going into a dark shrine of his own right now. We haven't really seen the Dark Templar play much of a part in this game for Bling since the very early stages when he warped. I think he's only lost one all game long, so he's only used one DT throughout the entire game. And as now finally starting up that second Robo facility, another Colossus on the way. He's got Templar Archives down, so you can morph in Archons as well. And his army will continue to grow in strength here. Unit tab shows six Colossi apiece, so sniping off those two Colossi. Really did help Bling a lot there, really helped him to reset the Colossus number a little bit. A very big move as Snowski now scrambling to re-establish his main base, while Bling is just setting up a fourth base up to the upper right-hand corner instead. Bling just moving his army around, and Snowski also just moving his army around a little bit, seeing what he might be able to get up to here. Snowski just moving around. These uh, Zelda's about to drop off in the main base though. And uh, once again, and put a little bit of pressure onto this newly made Nexus. And Bling, is he going to be able to snipe this down once again? He's warping in a couple of DTs this time, so that extra DPS might help a lot in being able to uh, target this down. He's actually going after some probes here. The army's starting to come in. The warp isn't being left behind. Bling, not in a position with his army to actually make something happen at the same time this time. Picks up a few units, uh, just the four Zelda's. He gets out of there. So some damage done by Bling, but not much. That's Snowski continues to build up the closest count in this game. He's about to go up to nine. Bling heading in towards that number as well, with one in the way in his own production tab. Both players on plus three, but Bling, the only guy to have started plus one armor at this point. Moves across the map. Whoa, there's some GTs just randomly in the middle of the map here. Bling has an observer though, so he's going to be able to turn around and fight this now. 
does he not see that? He's going to see them? Okay, now he realizes that he can see them. Or maybe he didn't. Yeah, I think he knows now he's got an observer in his army, so he's okay. Random DTs. Not going to gain too much couple of uh, Archons have been warped in here. And they're going to pick off this pylon. Again, into the main base, playing, attacking. Trying to get as much damage done as he can. Tails off a cannon there. And we'll just start picking away at whatever he can. While positioning to come in and attack the third. But again, Snowski not over committing to, to defense of the main base. Actually, once again, under committing to defense of the main base because he doesn't want to die to this push coming up this ramp from Bling. Bling going to kite away here. Gets a lot of free shots on the south. So Snowski, he's getting so many free shots off here. Drops the time up as well. Nearly grabs another one. And moving over here. The main base. Going down to these GTs, and once again, Snobsy Court doing a really good job of continuing to defend his, uh, of continuing to defend his actual um, third base, which is where Bling's been his most, most, the most of his army, but he hasn't able to be, he's been under defending his uh, main, and again, that is kind of an issue, you know, this, this is kind of the art to splitting your army perfectly, and it isn't just leaving the entire thing over at one base and forgetting about the other, which is... What's kind of happening here? Blin starting to move across the map. He's created a pretty significant advantage for himself. He's got a bank here to remax from us. He's once again going into the main, just keeping his opponent back. Of course, he's got a fourth base set up for himself in this upper right corner. So he cleans out something here. And continues to advance forwards a bunch of Colossi in this army of Snowski. He's going to start spreading up. He's going to get into the belly concave. Bling, is he going to go down this ramp? No, he's just going to send his Colossi forward and start kiting backwards once again. Force Snowski to attack into him. Bling's actually starting to lose a lot of Colossi here very quickly. But it looks as though he might just have a little bit more left in front of the Colossi to tank. And that might make all the difference now. And actually the Walkism coming in from behind with a few Zealots. And that's really helping out as well. Really helping just take one extra Colossus down. It's actually 5 against 5 Colossi right now, a DT in this as well, Bling gonna have to back away from this for now, and Snobsky giving chase, Bling, he's 50 supply up, but these Colossi are not safe yet, at the same time we've got Zelds in the main base swiping away at whatever they can, so as long as Bling keeps these Colossi alive, he should be able to just retake the advantage with these, and yeah, there's not gonna lose another one, he loses one, but not another, as he will get down to the low ground, the DTs can chase no longer, and Bling walking in back to home, a bunch of Archons, and uh, the main base is finally clearing out as uh, he's actually killing off a bunch of workers over here as well with these outs. How many workers has he killed throughout this game? 61! Bling has been on fire throughout this game. Got an Archon moving forwards. We'll actually get toasted here by these Colossi. Bling with 5 Colossi on his own now. Might commit into this fight as again he has more on the ground in front. It's just tank for these Colossi and that really can make all the difference as we see these Colossi will get toasted. GG will be called, and Bling finally does manage to even this series up one game apiece in this best of seven. And that will be game GG. And, um, wow. Quite a long game, actually. 25 minutes long for PvP. And, um,.